Hi, welcome. This is Mark Davidson. I'm with Canfield USA. Today, we'd like to talk about the food and beverage industry and how they're coping with the COVID-19 pandemic. And we'd like to pose some questions with Canfield's food and beverage segment manager, Patrick Lally. Um, I guess a couple of statistics I have here. There's about 1.6 million workers who work in the, the uh, food and beverage industry across the United States. And it looks like, as I'm reading here, there's about 32,000 food processing facilities across the country. Now, many of those facilities are small, but there are a few of these facilities that you could classify, I guess, as mega facilities. These plants have sometimes three, four, maybe 5,000 workers in each one. Um, now, some of these plants, as you've probably heard in the news, have had been forced to close because of high positive counts on COVID testing. And unfortunately, there have been dozens of deaths as well. So the, the food industry is looking for ways to, uh, uh, to solve some of these issues. So we'd like to talk to Patrick Lally about this. So Patrick, if you would, take a couple of seconds, introduce us to yourself. And what we'd like to talk about specifically is the CDC recently came out with some recommendations on what these food plants can do. So that's our topic for the day, really, Patrick. So if you would take a second, introduce yourself to us. Sure, thanks, Mark. Hey, my name is Patrick Lally. I'm the food and beverage segment manager for Camphill USA. Before this, um, the majority of my time was spent in medical device contract manufacturing, where I worked with um, OEMs who had devices that needed some type of air filter component to either protect their equipment or protect patients from bacteria and viruses and things like that. Okay, great. Now I've worked in the food and beverage industry myself, Patrick and you and I have talked about this before, but I, I just scanned through the CDC's guideline. I imagine you read them closer. Can you tell us what did they, uh, what were their suggestions and what did they have to say about air filters? Well, there really wasn't anything specific about air filters. Now that's not necessarily uncommon given the industry. It's not like healthcare, for example, where you have national um, recognized regulations and guidelines and things. It's just not that way in the food industry. Okay, yeah, I've always found that a little bit surprising um, to a certain degree that that's not more specific. Um, but, but in general, what did the guidelines have to say about HVAC and ventilation just from a general point of view? The theme throughout, and they stressed this a, a few times, was to make sure that you work with a, um, an HVAC engineer who has experience in food plants. Um, the reason being is food plants aren't cookie cutter. They're all very unique in their layouts, and then not to mention that their processes are, you know, very widely. So um, it's critically important, to, you know, to consult with, some, with an expert. And the reason being, they, a lot of them rely on areas of positive and negative pressure zones to create a cascading effect throughout the plant with airflow. So give you an example. So if you in a beef plant, let's say um, you have a final packaging area, you want the pressure in that area to be higher than it is in let's say the slaughtering area. So the cleaner air is moving from the cleaner areas to the less clean areas of the plant. Yeah, great. I've heard you talk about that before and that's a good way. Uh, I like the way you always describe that. It's a cascading effect that air moves from one zone to the next zone. And as you said, if you don't have uh, knowledgeable people about that, you could actually accidentally end up interfering with that flow of air. So that's a good point. Hey, let me ask you this then, Patrick. So if you, if you were to start talking with a, uh, a facility manager, how, what would you start talking about at this topic about COVID and the CDC guidelines? Well, I mean, you know, the first thing I would do is sit down and, and get an understanding of what their indoor air filtration um, needs are. You know, and, and like I mentioned before, every plant is different. A beef plant may have different um, indoor air quality requirements than, let's say, a aseptic packaging facility. Um, so once you identify, you know, the particle size, the type of, of particles you're looking to filter out, that's where you know a filter guy like myself would come in, and we can make de uh, recommendations based on um, the filter's MERV rating. And essentially, what that means um, is that the higher the MERV rating, the more effective and more efficient it's going to be at, at capturing small particulate. Okay, so uh, if, if you were to go to a food plant then and say, uh, based upon your, your requirements, what you need to have in your facility as far as air quality, and you, you both work together and you determine a MERV 13 is the filter that's going to deliver that level of air, then that's where you would start with. Does that seem like a logical place to start? Not exactly. Um, so, and there's two critical things here. So first of all, um, 
you know, once you've determined the level of filtration that you need, you do need to make sure that the filter that you choose also has MERV 13A. This is assuming you determine MERV 13 is what you need. Make right. sure it has that A rating on the filter. Um, the reason behind that is a lot of uh, filter manufacturers use materials that rely on an electrostatic charge to capture particles. Over that charge dissipates and, and, as, and the MERV ratings are gonna drop off some. Um, a MERV A filter has been tested with that charge deactivated beforehand. So you know what the actual filtration efficiency is gonna be over the life of the filter. An easy way to remember it, I think, is make sure it has MERV A because that's, that's you know the actual efficiency is gonna be. Okay, great, thanks. I've heard you describe that before using the word actual, that A is for actual, and that's always been a good way for everybody to remember. And now a minute ago, you said you had two critical points, so that was one. What's the second point? So the second point is um, COVID-19 does change things a little bit. So, you know, as we all heard in the news, um, it's transferred by respiratory droplet nuclei. That's how the virus is carried. And our experts at CAMPHIL have done the science and the research to determine what the most common particle sizes are that carry those nuclei, or that carry the, um, the droplets, rather. So on the very small end, we're talking about 0.5 microns. The most common is somewhere between 1 micron and 15 microns. And to give you an idea, one micron is about as thin as a sheet of paper. So that's how small that is. Um, the most common type, or most common size rather, is roughly in that 2.5 micron range. So based on this information, Campbell has determined that the most optimal, the minimum optimal efficiency you need is MERV 15A. But we're also suggesting if you can use a MERV 16A or a HEPA filter, um, that will help you capture um, roughly 95 to 100% of those particles in that size range. Okay, great. I get it. So uh, kind of wrap all of that part of the discussion up. So in the old quote, we'll put it this way. In the old days, you would talk to the plant and identify the particle of concern, base your filtration on that. But in today's world with COVID, um, you really want to identify uh, what filtration is going to give you the level of protection. And you're saying MERV 15A and 16A you're looking at 95 to 100% protection level. So again, I see what you're saying. That's, that's kind of changed the picture a little bit now that uh, uh, COVID-19 has come along. I guess one more question here. Now I've been in some bakery facilities before and bakery, commercial bakeries have a lot of flour dust and they've, very, they've used uh, standalone air purifiers that hang from the ceiling. And that, that's been very successful controlling flour dust in bakeries. Would something like that be applicable to these large beef and poultry plants that you're talking about? Absolutely. Um, and the good thing about those units, they can be um, installed in over critical areas in the plant. And they're typically um, up to 4,000 CFM, so they're pretty decent size. And they're versatile too, so you can throw um, or you can in insert any type of filter from a HEPA filter. I've even seen molecular filters installed where, you know, plants have had issues with um, you know, uh, harmful gases and vapors from cleaning agents. And you know, some of their employees were, were becoming, um, you know, having, being irritated by it. And then to elaborate that on that some, these units are also come in smaller sizes. So food plants also have other areas where people congregate, like cafeterias, um, locker rooms, et cetera. And there are smaller versions of those for those type of settings. Yeah, great, I remember we were somewhere one time and you were talking to somebody, you made the point that um, a lot of times what happens in locker rooms, uh, workers kind of let their guard down a little bit and start to maybe take their PPE off uh, maybe a little bit early. So that's, I understand what you're saying. That's probably a good reason to have a, a standalone air purifier in those areas. And maybe it doesn't have to be as large as you might have out on the plant floor. So that makes sense. Okay, I tell you what, let's, Let's wrap this up. And one thing we've always done when we try to wrap these conversations up is just to kind of project yourself forward in time. And let's say you're sitting across the table from a maintenance manager at a, one of these large food plants, and he's generally looking, he's looking for a way to protect his employees better. Uh, what are some of the things you're gonna talk to him about? Well, I first, the first thing, I guess there's three things. Let's, um, the first thing I would say is, um, make sure that the filters you're using have a MERV A rating on the label. And I would go as far as to go up on the rooftop, open up one of your air handling units, uh, pull a filter out and, and take a look at the label. That's the first thing. Um, the second thing is, 
I think the CDC said, um, anytime you make major changes or any type of changes to your airflow in your plant, you want to consult with experts. And I would say HVAC experts and also filtration experts as well. Um, and then I guess the last thing, like, you know, we talked about those, those portable units are great options um, for various parts of the plant from the production floor to common areas like cafeterias and things. Okay, great. I, I really like the idea about uh, asking uh, maintenance managers to go ahead and get up on the roof themselves, open up those units and see what kind of filters they're actually using because my guess is a lot of them aren't actually aware of the filters that are in there. So that's a good point. Okay, uh, Patrick, appreciate your time. This is a difficult topic. COVID-19 has certainly impacted the food beverage uh, tremendously and, and everyone's looking for a way to protect their employees. So that's good information. We appreciate that. So again, this is Mark Davidson for Camphill USA and we appreciate your time watching. Thank you. Thanks again, Patrick. Thank you.